Okay, good afternoon everybody. Thanks for joining us all. Uh, we had a really um, good interest towards the Shine workshops and setting up of them. We thought this would be the best way of getting everyone together in one place and giving you the opportunity to answer any questions as and when you, you want to ask them. It's very informal. Do ask questions at any time and we can pick them up and answer them pretty quickly for you. Uh, this is our first webinar, so our inaugural webinar for BDA. So apologies if it's not done particularly well. We will learn and uh, hopefully these will be a regular feature from the BDA. Um, Children Will Shine uh, has been running not for that very long period of time actually. It was set up as part of um, some project funding that we had and it was initially set up in Southwark and Barnet and Manchester as part of the SPLD trust funding. So they've not been running that long but they've been hugely successful because Parents want low-cost solutions to their children's needs that don't cost a huge amount of money. Um, and I know how much lessons can cost. They can cost up to about £70 an hour for a one-to-one -one lesson. So we wanted to find a way of, of giving lessons at a much cheaper cost that would be overseen by a specialist but would have a group element, um, but would have some sort of individualisation within the group element. So we started off in these initial locations and we've just started a new one in Peterborough that's going very well and Croydon at the local association there is about to start and they're currently recruiting for staff. The locations are all in very, very different places. We've got one in a school, we've got one in a church hall, another in a community centre. It doesn't seem to matter where they take place actually, as long as you've got sort of a large um, place where you can put in the tables and the resources, it doesn't seem to matter where it's taking place. Um, particularly one place where it's taking place in, in a school, the parents are able to congregate outside and they've all got very friendly with each other and we put on parents' courses for the parents. And it's very important that the parents do get to know each other and can talk about their own experiences to each other. And we found that particularly does work. And we're hoping that those parents will then start up their own association in that location. So the model started around um, using about 20 children that um, that would make it very uh, viable financially. Uh, if there was one specialist teacher and four teaching assistants and the children paid £7.50 an hour. Um, and that seems to be the way it's working. Some of the locations have got less children in them, less teaching assistants. And again, it does, it does vary. So there's no set, set amount really, but we're looking at 20 being the optimum number. Um, what happens is the children are initially tested in reading and spelling before the program starts. And we use RAP4 to set them for reading and spelling and find out their, their reading and spelling ages compared to their chronological age. And from that, we can really start looking at what, what groups they should be set in. And generally, the children are working on tables in a, a range of activities that might include phonics or touch typing, paired reading, those sorts of things. And we do encourage individualised learning within those tables. Um, we encourage them to be independent as well and do self-checking exercises. Um, and they're one and a half hours long. They have a short break in the middle of it. Um, they're after school. Um, but we do think that they would work very well for a breakfast club as well. But at the moment, um, we haven't got any breakfast clubs going. just had a question, uh, which is just asking, RAP4 does not provide reading and spelling age, or does it? Yes, it does, actually. It does provide a reading and spelling age. You can use it from the age of five right up to about 95, but it does give you a reading and spelling age. Um, it's standardised. Uh, it gives a standardised score and percentile score as well. But we do find that that's a good test to use. It also has a maths test as well with it that can give a maths age. From my experience of working within the project, um, RAP4 has been the most used test and it has, it has um, support, it's been quite well for retesting as well uh, later in, the, in like, especially in the project. So it has helped and, and we have used the maths side of it uh, on, some of the, uh, on some of the younger children that we found that need some more support. And uh, so this, I forgot to mention that Aaron's with me. Aaron's done a lot of uh, work with the Shine Project, so he's got a lot of expert expertise with the Shine Project. Um, okay, so um, 
some of the older children do have study skills as well and we're able to give them study skills within the tables um, if they are older and, and differentiate the work within the tables. So how can it work for you? Well, we've been looking at uh, how we can roll this out nationally and what we thought was really um, if we had some kind of licensing agreement that people would sign and that would allow for an initial payment of £880 to be paid to the BDA really for the whole concept of this because this is a copyrighted um, idea. Um, and for that we will give you training in the school. We'll come and give you a day's training. Um, now that could be for whole school, it could be just for teaching assistants, it could just be for specialist teachers and teaching assistants. Um, it's up to you to decide how you use that training. We're very experienced at carrying out whole school training or just uh, training for TAs and things. Um, we would then expect the school to become an organisational member of the BDA because then that would then strengthen the ties between your school or your organisation and the BDA. We would then look at supporting you in recruiting the staff. We've got a lot of expertise in uh, recruiting staff, teachers, teaching assistants. We've got lots of links and contacts. Um, and then we would also um, point you in the direction of the resources that we're using. Now we have got very good resources that we use, but we do recognise that you will have specialist teachers who will have their own resources and you may well want to mix and match. So it's it's not um, it's not definite, you know. It's not, it's not prescriptive in terms of resources that you use. But we have a lot of experience of using different resources. So we hope that the ones that we've chosen will work for you. These resources can in, include things like a wooden alphabet, touch type read and write spell, style comprehension. Um, there's maths for um, for style as well, and reading books, a range of reading books. Um, we all come from different training courses and things like that. I'm particularly I'm, myself was trained on DILP, so I'd recommend DILP, but there are different materials that you could use as well, like Alpha to Omega. Um, children particularly like using Word Shark, Number Shark, those sorts of things. And we would provide you with a, with a suggested reading list. We're very, very keen on quality assurance and making sure that all products, uh, projects are run according to the strict um, guidelines that we, we want these to run in a particular way because we know that they work um, and we would charge £770 for a quality assurance visit. And then after that you're free to then run as you wish um, but we would like a, a, an annual fee to be paid to the BDA um, to run this in future. Can I just, uh, just so people know, TTRS is Touch Type Written Spell. Uh, this is a piece of software that we've used, that is, we've actually proven to be used, really useful within the current Shine project. Uh, this is a, it's a typing program that, that supports typing, reading and spelling. Uh, it starts on a very basic level. Uh, it's, it's very easy to use. It's a very simple piece of software. It's also got uh, some online resources as well. So it works really well uh, with young children as well. We've, uh, We've taken this to lots of local associations around the country use it, uh, and I can tell you that, that Leicester Dyslexia Association has just started using it, and we've got some really good results from it. And I think that's important to note as well, that, that as we're running these, these workshops, we are collating impact data, because we want to show that these children are making really good progress um, within their groups, and we want to use that impact data. So we would ask that schools do provide their, their results, their testing, and their, their um, uh, testing as they go on through the year as well. Um, RAP4 again can be used uh, every six months, you've got alternative forms of the test and it can be used every six months. The other thing that we're interested in is, is making sure that schools do work towards our dyslexia friendly quality mark and that means that there's a sort of range of things that schools can work towards to get that mark which is our accreditation and we can offer a lot of advice on getting that accreditation as well. We have got a lot of experience in, in going for funding and looking at funding opportunities that might be able to support the workshops in the future. We, we know that they are self, um, they, they will run by themselves if you've got 20 children, um, but they're obviously for schools and maybe opportunities to get additional funds in as well. And some schools have talked about using 
people premium as well. For some children, it may be even £7.50 an hour is too much for some families. And so it may be that we, we look at some sort of funding opportunities for those children or the cost of lessons are slightly higher for some, slightly lower for, for others or, or free. So there's a lot of range, range of opportunities here anyway. We think there's quite a few advantages to the school. We're looking at over 38 weeks, um, an income of £8,550 being brought into the school. Um, out of that, take out the, the BDA costs and the staff costs. And again, you can pay your staff exactly what you, know, what you want to pay them. We've worked on £8 per hour for teaching assistants and £35 an hour for teachers. But again, your, your cost could be more or less. There will be a profit for the school and that can be used in a number of ways. That could be used to subsidise some children or buy in additional resources. I think the advantage to the school is that the whole school does become dyslexia friendly, uh, which has to have an impact on every child. And because the children are tested every six months, you can measure the improvement and that um, can be good as well for your, for your school improvements. Um, you're not going to be meeting the needs of the very severe children. Those children may always need some one-to-one -one support, but you will be meeting the needs of the less severe children, and it's going to be at a low cost both to the school and to parents. I think there's a lot of information there, and you may well have some questions as we've gone on. We'll do our best to um, answer them. If there's any questions we can't answer here and now, we'll, we'll, we'll take them away and send them out later on. Um, but hopefully between Aaron and myself, we can answer anything um, here and now. So please, please ask anything that you need to ask. If, so, if someone wants to do it um, verbally, if you want to just uh, flash up on the, on the message board just to say, uh, please take me off mute so everyone can hear the question. If you don't, you can always put it onto the question panel and we'll see them pop up. Um, um, Oh, I'm just waiting. We can see it's quite clever. We're quite. I'm quite happy with the system we've just put into place, and it's worked quite well. Right, Katrina. I think if you want to just type your email address in for me. So if people want to email you, because that's probably the easiest thing. So hopefully this. Hopefully this will work. Hey. You've got Katrina's email address if you want to speak to us uh, afterwards. What we're going to do for everyone that's joined us, uh, we will send out a um, we will send out the, uh, the 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 link to the YouTube video that we're going to post. We're going to post the actual webinar we've just done on YouTube. It takes a couple of days, but Glynis, you've just sent us a question, so I can just see what the question says. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, Wait. will this program be suitable for students with learning difficulties who are aged 16 to 24 years old? For example, resources suitable for the age group and different funding streams. Um, at the moment, the, the projects are, are the eldest child is probably around about 15. Um, but I, I can see that this could be used with, with young adults. Um, in my experience, young adults are, are more reluctant to work in a group. They've often got um, less self-esteem and confidence and they're not happy working in a group to start with. Um, so it may well be tricky getting this off the ground with a group of, of adults. Um, it may be that some initial sort of one-to-ones or something like that might be useful for them to get their confidence up. Then I can, I can think of resources that would help a 16 to 24 year old Again, they may be good with um, touch typing already. They may not have those skills. So I think this is something that can be adapted, and we just need to um, put our heads around it. I got a similar question from somebody else who, who was looking at um, approved for very young children. And again, I could think about different resources that could be used for those very young children. So I think this is, this is the joy of this being a model in its very early stages, that we have the, the experience and the knowledge and the specialists know-how within the organisation to be able to point you in, in the way of working successfully with different groups of adults and children. 
I, I can always add on to that, that, that we, the project we're going to run in Croydon will actually be uh, for uh, Key Stage 3 and above. So it's not looking at, at Key Stage 1 or 2, it will be Key Stage 3 and above. So, and that's being more look, looked at. And, and from my experience as well, that we've worked, the, 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 the basis of this project is that, that a lot of local associations already run after school workshops like the Shine Project. And from my own personal experience, I've worked within a group of, uh, about, of young adults doing GCSEs and, and we've worked quite well together. Uh, but again, you, I, I, the one-to-one -one support was always there, so it did actually tell me. So, but doing stuff with study skills and, and things like that always helped. If anyone else wants to have a question, please send one. If you, um, what we'll do then, um, we'll wait a few more seconds if anyone's got any more questions. We will send you, as I said, the email with uh, right, with the link into the YouTube video so you can watch this again if you want to show this to anyone else. Um, Katrina's email address is there. What I will do then is let me just do this. I will, no, wrong one. No, don't do that. Sorry, your technology. Right. So I'll let me type my email address in now. Spelt it right. Yes, I have. Yeah. So if anyone wants to email me, you've got my email address as well. So you've got mine and Katrina's there. Um, uh. And actually, just going back to that question, talking about different funding streams, um, one of the things I'm doing at the moment is looking at uh, awards for all funding, putting together a template for funding, because there's opportunities to, to get £10,000 through awards for all that we think would be suitable for these projects. I think it's just another question just come. Uh, it's from Caroline, yes. Caroline, can you break down the 8,550, trying to understand the 880 plus 770, 700 fees? Okay, we'll work, we work that out on 20 children paying £7.50 an hour for an hour and a half um, over 38 weeks. Now, hopefully my maths isn't brilliant, but hopefully that should come to 8,550. £7.50 for an hour and a half times 20 times... One and a half hours. Yeah. Times thirty eight. Thirty eight. Um, and then you've got the it must be fifteen pound. Yes, because it's an hour and a half. Yeah. Um so it's um so minus the um eight hundred and eighty pounds for the training. Now that's an initial fee, you wouldn't pay that every year. Um and then after that you pay the seven hundred pounds. Um the seven seventy pounds is paid for a quality assurance visit every year. So what you've got left is take off the cost for the um, teachers would be pure profit for the organisation. What what you've got is there is one of the things about the project is that we that that the quality assurance is quite a big thing about from from a VDA point of view. We want to make sure that uh, uh, that you are uh, you are we're, we're happy that everything's going well and because it's our model that's the way that we can confirm that. The, these are these the fees that we've put on there are very much within line within the quality mark system as well. So if you if you went for a quality mark uh, um, assessment uh, for your verification for quality mark, you're looking at the same kind of price. So that's what the kind of lines we're working on this project. Uh, uh, but what you can see is if you're going you're to make the eight thousand five hundred pound profit after is that profit? No, it's, it's it's the the total amount in for the year will be eight thousand five hundred and fifty. Okay. From that, you need to um, take out the cost of the staff yeah. and take out the cost of an QA so, visit yeah. and the cost of the VTA. Yeah. So the in the eight 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 eighty is the initial fee you pay. After that, you would have you don't you'd pay seven pound a year for the for, for the actual license fee of the project because that's basically what that is. Janice, have you sent another question, Janice, let's just see. We really want a group of people, volunteers and staff at the Harrington Scheme to have some training in teaching their dyslexic learners. Um, we can provide that. Anyway, would you do a one-off? Yes, of course we would. I'm, I'm more than happy to come out and, and do either a day or half a day or some from the training department to do that. So that isn't a problem at all. We certainly do that as a bespoke course for you. 
if you want to contact me privately on that email address, we can set that up for you. Caroline just said thank you. It's all right. It's okay. Is there any other questions there? Okay, no, that's fine. No, that's okay, right? I have to reply. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you've, you've probably got um, quite a few things that you're thinking about at the moment. Um, do do go away, have a think about uh, what we've gone through. If you want further clarification of anything, we're happy to come back to you um, individually and go through things more. There may be some opportunities if you live locally to any of these projects to actually observe uh, one of the projects going on as well, and we can we can help you. Um, do that. They, they, they've mostly finished for Christmas now, but we could sort that out in the new year for you. So I hope you find this as, as exciting and interesting as, as we do. We're very committed to this project. It is working well at the moment, and we really want this to be um, something that's, that's rolled out nationally, actually, so that all children can get the benefit of this tuition um, at the cheapest price possible. But thank you all very much for joining today and for being part of our first webinar. Um, and hopefully we will um, talk again soon.